Thank you for this uh, young Lansingite uh, welcoming me here to crash the party. Um, I gotta, I gotta throw a little bit of a, we were a little peeved, a little bit peeved in Lansing that you scheduled this the same night as the Capital City Film Festival. If you want to still party this weekend, we got three great nights of film going on in Lansing the whole weekend. So get at me after this. Hit it, Johnny. Okay, I'm going to be talking to you tonight about the glocal life. What does it mean to be glocal? Um, we have to come to an understanding of what the definition of glocal is. To some people, it means think globally and act, think globally and act locally. The problem with this definition is it leaves an important question out. What exactly is local? Um, typically, we understand local as being our immediate surrounding community, people that we see, places that we see every day. But that definition is incomplete because we have all the social media and information technology that allows us to be connected anywhere in the world. Um, we're seeing this very vividly uh, in the last few months in the Middle East where we have revolutions going on in countries that have had dictatorships for uh, decades, even a century in some cases. And some of us in this room probably actually were able to influence those revolutions. So really the global life is all about living globally and acting globally. Um, for an example, what could a hostel in uh, upstate New York, uh, a small tribe in northern India, and Motor City Casino potentially have in common? It could be you. We need to expand our definition of what local means to understand that we're all able to be influencers anywhere in the world, from any wor anywhere in the world at any time. So you have to understand what your local is, how do you global, what type of technology do you use, and where is that? For me, my example is a couple general places. First of all, the picture on the left there is uh, St. Patrick's Day in East Lansing, Michigan. Got to love Michigan, right? Israel and China. That's what kind of the main places that I operate in. So the local process is really a six-step process. First of all, you got to get involved. For me, that meant getting involved in Lansing to start out with. If you want to be able to influence people, even using social media, you have to be in their ears and in their faces. They have to get to know you, understand what you're about. Secondly, don't get too comfortable because you got to get out there. You have to explore new things, get out into the world. Um, that's what I did for a few summers in China. I actually got to go learn how to um, use chopsticks and even meet Jet Li over there. I got to throw that picture in there. It was, it was friggin' awesome. Third, most important, build relationships. When you're out there in the world, you're surrounding yourself with primary sources. You don't even realize it. If you want to influence people, you got to be able to meet people from all over the world because once you connect with them on social media, they're going to be giving you new, new news from a primary source. So this is a good example. This is a Google group I keep with students in Beijing. We're talking about, as we often do, some political issues going on in China. As you know, there's a lot of controversy with some of the ways that the government operates over there. Um, Typically, some of these stories are going to be things that I talk about just off the cuff, but now, as you can see up here, this is uh, one of the posts from the students. She's actually in Beijing talking about this story, so I can now influence my network uh, much more accurately through these primary sources. Fourth, you've got to share your stories. You've got to get out there. Start a blog. Uh, write notes on Facebook. Make sure that while you're growing your network that they're hearing from you. That's what I did when I lived in Shanghai last year. I started a blog and informed my network back at home about what life was like in China. Um, and once you start that, it's amazing how fast things grow. By the time I had started the blog, after a month, I was already on WJR doing stories from Shanghai. I had a column in Dome Magazine and even Huffington Post. And so my network was already expanding at an exponential rate. And once that does happen, the fifth step is watch your network grow and follow it. Once I had started the blog and started growing my network, I was able to be in places I couldn't even imagine. I had a group of students that picked me out of a thousand different blogs that go to Israel and blog about life there for free. It's pretty awesome. And you know you're Gloco when you're paying attention to news and paying attention to primary sources you never would before, such as this post on Facebook last week about a news story of grenades being thrown into Israel from my friend there that I met this year. It's then when you realize the important part about being Gloco is that your friends and your networks they're coming to you from the front lines of life. It's not some main street, mainstream media bullshit. It's people that are actually on the ground. They're telling you about events in real time. It's not something to take lightly. So congratulations. You are now your own primary source with a network full of primary sources. You are global. The question is, now what do you do? What do you do with all this global knowledge that you've actually taken in? You've got to come home. And my place is always going to be the state of Michigan, right, baby? You can, only, you can only do so much. You can only do so much on, on the web with Twitter and Facebook. You've got you to friggin' live somewhere. And all the time I spent in China and Israel, I wanted to come back right here. 
I brought it all home. I'm now working on a nonprofit organization called the U.S. China Creative Space to take all the knowledge I learned, the connections that I got in China, bring it back here. We have 2,600 Chinese students at Michigan State University. They spend $100 million in our local economy. We want to make sure that you meet them and that they're starting new businesses and creating jobs right here in Michigan. My name is Dan Redford. I think I'm local. I hope that you want to join me in being local. You can follow me if you want to. If not, go out there, see the world, and impact your local community. Thanks.